we go back to the end of May, yeah. we, we all know what happened in Uvalde. The next day, you were talking about wanting to do a camp for the kids there yes. just to give them an hour, two hours, three hours of a distraction from yes. everything going on in that town. Mm -hmm. Why? I think the biggest thing is, is you know, um, you look at, I, I have an eight and 10 year old son. And I think the biggest thing is, is, you know, you, you're having such a horrific event that has happened to innocent kids. I mean, they, they, haven't, they didn't put themselves in a situation. They did not, they weren't in a situation where they're maybe with the wrong type of people or anything. We're, we're talking innocent kids that are just going and doing what they do every day and go to school and, and to just grow as, you know, young children and things like that. And I think what the biggest thing is, is that really struck me and it kind of struck me. It started when it was 10 years ago, I believe, when everything happened at Sandy Hook. And um, at that time, I, we had had our, my wife and I had had our first son, Harrison. And I just remember seeing all this. And again, you're just looking at, you know, being a father for the first time and so forth and having a newborn. You know, that really struck me. It just like, you know, there's these poor families and these innocent children. And, you know, they didn't, they didn't put themselves in this position. They don't know how to defend themselves. Um, and, and you see that. And then now you fast forward to what happened in Uvalde. And I think that's what really struck me is that these children seeing things that humans shouldn't have to see and adults and now you got second through fifth graders that are seeing things that are just horrific and just you know that really struck a chord with me and probably more so just because of having a 10 and 8 year old having a you know now a fifth and third grader you know they're, they're in the same ballpark they're in the same age group there with that and to see what happened and to a community that is a smaller community that is almost of a family type community that that just really struck that they you know they needed something those kids needed something to try to deviate from all the horrific things that were happening and, and you know as just anyone you know you try to figure out what are some ways that i can help and you know I figured obviously being in the world of athletics that, you know, just to do something to deviate them and try to help them and what what can we best provide for them to give them just just a just a break from everything that's going on in that community. The junior college there is a staple in that community. I mean there's politicians who have debates in that at that JC and it's one of the centerpieces is kinda like the high school there. You emailed the school. Mm -hmm. How quickly did they hop on board and want to help you, your program, kind of help this town heal, even if it's just through letting the kids play basketball for a few hours? Yeah. And so, you know, obviously being cognizant of what's going on and knowing that they're not in a hurry to answer an email from Mark Moorfield and Mary Harden Baylor, um, but still wanted to kind of get that information or get something in front of them, knowing that, you know, not expecting to get anything back for like a month. Um, given obviously everything that's going on and you know we had sent an email out to the ISD um, we had re sent emails out I believe one was to the president at Southwest Texas Junior College and being a tight-knit community you know that they all communicate and so forth and I believe it was about maybe three weeks after the fact maybe two to three weeks after the incident um, that Southwest Texas Community College had gotten back to me and said hey we love this idea. Um, we're trying to think of something. Let's let us get through some situations and figure out some logistics of what needs to be done um, and so forth. And so that that they responded about in that time frame. And then probably I would say sometime in June, got another email saying, hey, here's what from Southwest Texas Junior College. Here's what we're looking at. We're going to have a kids college camp and it's going to be for the Robb Elementary School kids second through fifth grade would you like to participate and so obviously we jumped on it um, and so forth and kind of said okay what you know started to say here's how we can interject you you know have a little basketball camp and and so what it ended up being was it was a week-long thing with a morning session and an afternoon session and each day, Southwest Texas Junior College in that camp had planned different things. And so um, one of the things that they had planned for us was, okay, June 11th, um, the morning and afternoon session that Monday, 
um, why don't you run a basketball camp and you know we'll rotate groups and things like that and so it gave us an opportunity to participate in that and that's how we kind of got to where okay great idea let's put two ideas together how can we get this here's what we're looking at here's what you can offer and kind of came together um, with Southwest Texas Junior College just again to provide you know two hours of just something to take those children's minds off and, and, and you can look at it and say well you know this incident happened there and now we're talking it's July and, and you can sense you know still there's obviously it may not reflect so much in the media but there's obviously still a very heavy heavy presence of things and so forth and what's going on there and they still need that break just maybe because we don't see it every day on the news or read about it and it's not on the front page as it once was in that first month those those children still have you know are seeing a lot of things there's still a lot of things that are going on there in that community that those children need a reprieve from i mean it's still one of those things you're still shocking new updates constantly how much did you when you look at what sports can offer look mm -hmm. at 9 11 one f ceremonial first pitch from a president mm -hmm. was this massive symbol of national healing after one of the biggest tragedies on American soil. On a lesser scale, it's not New York, it's not the Twin Towers, mm -hmm. but it's a town that's hurting mm -hmm. badly. How much did just using a sport to provide any level of healing, how much did that kind of drive your want to do this? I think that was the biggest thing was, you know, we're not going down there um, to, to gain attention or do it by saying, here's what UMHB does or here's what UMHB women's basketball does. The whole point of it was, is to go down there and, and first and foremost were the children and just to give them that a, a reprieve. And regardless, you may not have ever played basketball in your life as in that age group of second to fifth graders, but the whole point was to have fun and, and to be and, and to do something where we could take their attention off. And, and, and we, we didn't run it like we run our camps here or practice. It was all about having fun and dribble relays and shooting games and, you know, just basic, just basic fun through athletics. And, you know, being able to take a couple players and myself and Coach Fred and Ellis and his family and then taking my eight-year-old because he wanted to go um, and, and so forth and, and kind of play with the kids and everything. I, I think that's the biggest thing is, is that there has to be a distraction and there has to be something that creates a distraction. And obviously donations and things like that, those are all great things. But when the day's over, those children need a distraction from the reality of what's going on in that community. And that community, again, even though we don't say anything, has a long way to go. Um, we went into a restaurant there in town, um, had breakfast before we started the camp. And I remember a gentleman asking where we're from, we're in our UMHB shirts, start talking and, and he thanked us for being there, you know, and, and coming into the community. And I think that's what that community needs to a degree is something to take those children's minds away from everything. Uh, again, we're talking about things that people see in war or horrific crimes. You're a second to fifth grader. I mean, in life, that's not how it's supposed to be. And, you know, I think that was the biggest thing is, you know, ha as a coach, you can only offer so many things. Um, and so what's the best thing that we can offer? Well, what we can do is let's offer athletics. Let's offer a sense of going out and playing and having fun and having our focus with our friends and just enjoy being around while having fun and doing something that can distract them. And I think that was the biggest focus that we had in going in and wanting to do this and to be able to um, try in some form, even in my mind, a very small piece of trying to help those children. How refreshing was it for those few hours just on a basketball court to just see these kids laughing, having fun, sweating a little bit even? Oh yeah, well the gym had no AC so we were really sweating. Um, but I think the biggest thing was is that again, they were having fun. 
you know, they were with their friends and we were laughing and, and you know, we were just, we just, we just were having fun. We, we were doing things that second and fifth graders should be doing. Laughing, having fun, enjoying, enjoying their friends and, and doing it without the distractions of the real world or the consequences of things. Just at peace, having fun, enjoying each other. And, and I think that was, a, that was very, and I think that's the biggest thing is it was refreshing to see that those young kids, and, and we obviously don't see them on a daily basis, but it was refreshing to see that they're having fun knowing what they went through. None of us have been through it, but knowing what they did go through and at least to be able to give them, to be able to put a smile on their face it, it is worth it all. What's the message that you want? I'm not even, not even your team, not your campers. What's the message you hope comes across when people see this, that your program, without advertising it to the world before, went and just did something nice for a community almost six hours away from here that didn't know you, didn't know that your university existed, in that a community that was that in need? What message do you want people to see? I think the biggest thing is, is we, we always, anything that we do within our program, we don't do it to, 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 for media purpose, social media purpose, to draw attention. I think it's just doing what's right and what's the right thing to do as individuals um, and to do what's right in when someone's in need. And it, it, it's, it's just the golden rule that we follow and we go by is that, you know, when you see someone in need, a community in need, be willing to offer without having to do it for your own reasons or self-promotion. Go and do it and not have to tell everybody and not have to alert the community or the world about this is what you're doing to get on. Just the golden rule. You see someone in need, do the right thing. And somehow, some shape, try to provide them with some help, some laughter, um, just something to get them to feel good and, and to help the healing process. And, you know, that, that was the biggest thing. Um, it, it wasn't about drawing attention. It's not about doing this. It's not. It's about doing what's right as a human being and seeing that you have a community that's hurting that for us, it is accessible for us to get down there and to help. And I think that's the biggest thing is, is we have to have more of that mindset. And, and the great thing that's happened about it is we've gotten a great relationship with the Southwest Texas Junior College. And, and, and a matter of fact, we want to continue to help. We're, we're talking about some different things we can do in the fall. And I think we're going to do like a school um, supply drive, things like that. We're going to go back because the whole team couldn't go because we are in the summer but we're going to go down there as a whole team. And so there's different things to do that we're working on still yet to kind of give back to that, that, that age group from Robb Elementary. But I think, again, the biggest thing is, is do it with the purpose of wanting to help, not for yourself. And I think, again, that's what a lot of our, even for our program, we talk about we over me, not to do it for publicity, but do it because it's the right thing to do.